Hey everybody, this is Hale. Welcome back to the Kerbal Space Program. Uh, we are just about to kick off a mission to the space station where I do some really neat docking. What space station you say? That is a good question. Let's go check it out. So let's go to the Space Center, go here, and go here. And zip. So I've been practicing my docking so that I don't look like a total buffoon when I try it, and I've correct created a, a small space station right here. So it's in Kerbin orbit, as you see, and uh, this is the combination of, let's see, one, two, five different missions. In addition, I've had uh, probably about three other fueling missions to move fuel up here. So I'll just kind of go over the composition of the station. There's two structural elements right here, which is this, uh, uh, what you call it, a docking hub on either end with a fuel tank in the middle. And as you can see, this is a complete spacecraft. So here's the engine and here's the command module. And there's actually another connecting element on the end. And I've linked two of those together to form what is the core right now. Uh, plugged into that, we have a habitation module, which is right here, which is in, in its own right is its own spacecraft with a command module, fuel tank, and engine right here. Down here we have what I hope to be using in the future. This is what I would call a space tug. It has a docking port on the front which will allow it to connect to other objects as you can see and then a nuclear engine. I plan to use this to take items from curb and orbit and move them throughout the solar system. And then this is my last fueling mission right here which is actually still docked at the station. Uh, so it can be re-entered into Kerbin uh, anytime I'd like. So it's still up here right now, and it can go back. I think there's only one person at the space... Or no, no, I'm sorry. There are three people at the space station. Let's see. If you click on the crew hatch... Uh, click on the crew hatch. Don't tell me where the crew hatch is. I can find it. I wish that menu wasn't there. Stop it. Uh, there we go. Yeah, so you click on the... Not that click. You click on the crew hatch. Okay, so we have these three people here. So we have three people here, and then I think, do we have one person in the station itself? No, there's nobody there. See, so with all these command modules, they could be anywhere. Yes, so okay, so we have four people at the station right now. So, <coughs> excuse me. So three of which could go come back to Kerbin on this vehicle right here. And I think this is also a three-person command module as well. And then these are one-person command modules right here, any of which can be inhabited. So this has a three-person command module and a four-person occupancy module for, let it, for what it's worth. So, yeah, and I'll tell you how, how many people. Oh, there's a person here, too. I don't know how many people we have here. <laughs> Maybe we have five people at the station. Who knows? So you have to click on the hatch to see who's inside, which is kind of a little fiddly finding it. Da, 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 da. Crew hatch, crew hatch. There you are. Yeah, so we have quite a few people. So let's go back to... So anyway, what I want to do is... The other missions you can see are self-contained rockets, except for fueling expeditions. Uh, which this is almost out of fuel. So I've already fueled the station. You can actually go here and see all the fuel. I'll try and angle this a bit better. So you can see that the station's relatively well fueled as far as liquid fuel and the modern propellant. I have been using these radial modern propellants, but you have to fuel each tank individually, and it's kind of annoying. So I think I'm just going to be using the these right here, the kind of circular stacking ones for refuelable uh, modules refuelable modules that I'll need to refuel uh, because either if you use these then you have to refuel each one individually and it's kind of annoying. So the station's pretty much fuel f yeah fuel full except for this one right here which is going to be heading back to Kerbin anyway. So what I'd like to do in this mission is rather than attaching another rocket like this one to the station I want to just attach a habitation module, let's call it. And then maybe if I do that, I can return this thing to Kerbin 
and then kind of clean up the station a little bit. And I can make it bigger by setting more of these things up here in different missions. And they, they, they actually are kind of nice. The engine doesn't take up a lot of room, and neither does the uh, cockpit or command module. And I can put a docking hub on top of that anyway. So you can see there are quite a few solar panels. Each one has its own. So the station gets plenty of energy. So that's what I've been working on the last uh, week or so. One other thing while we are kind of going over the status of things. Let's go out to the moon. And I should really rename these so I know which one. Yeah, this is the one I want. So I took one of my orbiting probes that I had up, uh, uploaded, uh, lifted off last time. Let's increase the time warp. And moved it to roughly 15,000 meters over the moon. Since the moon doesn't have an atmosphere to speak of, at least in this game, uh, you can, in theory, move it as low as you want, correct me if I'm wrong, until you hit something. So anyway, I'll slow this down. So anyway, this is a 15,000 meters over the moon, which would be well within the Kerbin atmosphere. I thought it was kind of neat to move one of these this close. This one still had some fuel, so I kind of zoomed it in so you can get a better look at the surface. So it's kind of neat to take your existing assets and repurpose them for other stuff. Okie dokie. So let's go back to the Space Center. Let's go back to go to Untitled Spacecraft on Pad. That is what we want to do. So here we be. Here's my Untitled Spacecraft. And one of the things, uh, they upgraded, I'm actually on version 0.19.1, so I've updated this. Uh, squad's instructions for updating the uh, program are not very specific, so I just kind of dropped it over the old one. I think that's what you're supposed to do. So, this is a three-person crew, and to be honest, if I wanted to upload or uh, lift off a three-person cockpit, but only put one person in it, I'm not entirely sure how to do that, except for getting people to jump out of the cockpit, and that seems to be fatal in some instances. So here, I'll show you. So this guy's on the side of the rocket, and I can climb down. And actually, if the guy hits the ground, if the guy hits the ground, it's not fatal. If he hits the rocket, then he usually dies. So let's say I want to leave this guy behind. This is the only way I've figured out how to do it. Can I jump this guy off the uh, thing? Okay, so there we go. So they weevil and they wobble, but they don't fall down, I guess. So let's go back to the spaceship. So now it has two people, Derwig and Melmy. I think there's already a Melmy on the station. So I'm kind of ex uh, experimenting with different liftoff designs. This is a two-stage rocket. I'm trying not to do three stages for orbital maneuvers, and I think this is relatively decent. So let us throttle up. As you can see, I have my main engine right here. That's the one in the middle. Eight engines around the bottom, and then eight radial engines, and then I put six solid rocket boosters on for good measure. So then the solid rocket boosters will fall off, and then I think the radial engines can be safely jettisoned. Next, I put them pretty up high, and then I'll just detach the whole first stage. So let's see how this works. And let's light this candle, and then we'll be heading out over the ocean for an intercept with the station. All right, let's not do that. And let's throttle up. Now, what I did, since this, these craft are getting relatively large, they don't support their own weight anymore. So I have these little struts here, and I didn't have the uh, clamp releases at the right stage. So let's turn our lights on again. And off we go. Let's turn our stabilizer on, too. No. All right, let's try that again. And stabilizer is on. Throttle this bad boy back up. And go. All right. So third tries to the charm, as usual. So I have a little bit of concern with the solid rockets hitting the outboard engines down below. But we'll worry about that. I do have the decouplers for these a little larger than the ones below, so that they're spaced out a bit. And 
also, I'm going to throttle down and then jettison them and throttle back up. There you go. Look at that. Perfect. On the third try. <laughs> All right. So this is the payload. I don't think I covered that. This is the payload at the front. And I'll kind of go over the details of this when we get into orbit. So I'm going to do my gravity turn between 10 and 15,000. All systems are nominal. I could actually throttle up a little bit since nobody's overheating. This is the main engine right here. I believe these are the radial engines. Yes, they are. All right. So far, so good. And these are the outboard engines, which actually will last the longest. All right. We're getting up to where we do our turn. And Pitch over to the east. And it's plenty far. Don't go back that far. <laughs> I'm happy to leave the na atmospheric navigation to the computer. Let's throttle just a wee bit more, get some more speed going. This will start to put us in the uh, correct orbital trajectory. After these run out of fuel, I'll check to see what our apiosis is. Apiosis is. There they go, and they didn't hit the rocket. Orbital map, orbital map. All right, so we're getting up high enough to where we need to be. Let's go back to staging. Tilt over a wee bit more. We got some roll here, that's not a, oh, I don't have my uh, stabilizer on, that's why. And this should be good. And actually, I'm gonna wait, let's go back and so we're up 175,000. This is 131,000. So this is plenty high. I'm going to get up here and then use what's left of my first stage to go sideways a little bit. And as you can see, we're trying not to leave any debris on space. This is debris from the clamps at the landing pad. This is my mascot orbiting uh, Kerbin for some reason. I don't know if the new patch will make it deorbit since it goes low enough. This will not get that high. And then this one, I'll need to stretch the orbit out pretty far so the first stage doesn't have any chance of orbiting accidentally. So I can actually go in <coughs> excuse me and add maneuver and let's just go and it won't end up looking like this because I won't be applying this much thrust but I do want to start a wee bit early we got a minute until we get that high. And what's my altitude? All right, so we're up high. Let's turn on the RCS because this is a big thing. As you can see how dark it is. Um, see the headlights on the front. <laughs> All right, uh, not docking, orbital map. And let's go up. Even with RCS, it's going to take a little bit. That's fine. And there, there we go. There we go. And I'll probably start my burn pretty soon because the second stage doesn't have that powerful of an engine. So it'll take a while to get enough velocity to orbit. So actually, let us do that now. We'll burn what's left of the first stage out now. That's pretty nice. You can see how powerful the first stage is. And then there's what's left of it. So let us throttle down. Detach. There you go. Throttle back up. All right, there's our second stage. So now we're separated from the first stage. Let's go back to the orbital map. So we got a while for apiosis. So I think I'll wait a little bit, clear this maneuver. So as I said, I don't have the most powerful engine on here. It's efficient though, so it's good for fuel efficiency, but it's not good for power. And then we'll get into an orbit relatively close for this, and then we'll clean up the details. After doing this a few times, it actually makes a lot of sense. The first couple times, you're like, what the heck? So as you can see, we're a lot more responsive. I don't even need the RCS for minor corrections like this. And then you can see the first stage is 
on this trajectory so it'll hit the planet right around here and then that's the those are the radial engines still heading back to the planet all right let's adjust again and let's throttle up so you can see my velocity increase isn't going to be anywhere close to what it was with the first stage and maybe I do want to use the first stage a bit more I'm trying to not do three stages uh, maybe I do want to use the first stage a bit more for kind of an orbital insertion so the challenge with this is once you cross the Apiosis you're, you're falling back towards the planet and I think that makes your burn uh, less efficient so on this side I'm actually pushing the Apiosis up a little bit as I approach it but unlike more powerful engines it's not retreating from where I'm at so I'm actually going to cross it let's course correct get the most efficient burn and so you can see the uh, burn right here this is full power for this engine it's a big engine same as the main engine on the first stage but it emphasizes efficiency over raw power uh, let's see what else uh, so we're just kind of waiting to get up to speed and we're not quite at the apiosis yet but we will be soon And really, this is the best trajectory to be on. So I'm going to stay right here. This will actually, once we fall towards the planet, help push us up a little bit as well. So this actually is going pretty, pretty nicely. If I finish with just under half fuel, that'll be plenty for course corrections. As you see, I have a decent monopropellant as well. So we're past the apiosis. And you can see my direction of travel is now below my thrust but I'm gonna keep thrusting up to resist the pull of the planet so just kinda of wait so I, I'm kinda of debating whether this engines the best to use I think it is once you get you know into space but they liken it to using a barbecue grill uh, due to its uh, lack of power As you can see, the orbit's increasing around the planet. I should see a periapsis relatively soon. That was the original trajectory when we uh, ditched the first stage. As you can see, we're also falling back towards the planet, which is okay, because we're in a higher orbit than the station. There's my periapsis, and I'm going to throttle down. We're out of the atmosphere. And okay, stable orbit is achieved. Okay, and let's see what we're, so that's about a little less than half, pretty much what I expected. And one of the things I am doing is I'm trying to use more radial components. You see radial batteries, radial monopropellant. I was just saying I don't like to use those for refueling, but I don't plan on refueling this thing, so they make sense. And then I have the SAS up here. So while we're in orbit, uh, my, what my plan is, and you can't really, well, actually you can see it when I highlight it. There's a docking clamp right here, and then there's the habitability module, and then there's a docking clamp right here, and then a separator. So what my plan is, I'm going to dock this to the station, separate this ship from it, leave it at the station with another docking clamp attached, and then in theory I could rinse and repeat this process to build it out as far as I want. And I kind of set up the lights for this. These lights will be used for docking, and then these lights will be used to illuminate the docking port for a future docking maneuver. Okay, so that is Z plan. So let me set the station as a target. And... Is that set as a target? No, I've set the debris. This is my mascot, <laughs> which I have talked about previously. Set the state. Oh, okay, that's better because I was expecting to see. So this is where the, even though I'm not orbiting the planet at the same, I don't know what you call it, angle. Uh, here's where my angle crosses the station's angle for lack of a better term. And the station's green, I'm um, blue, which actually my orbit is actually prettier than the station's orbit. Uh, more equatorial, I guess, but that's okay. 
So we are going to set a maneuver here. Is that right? Yes, yeah, set maneuver. And then using these doodads, I always pick the wrong one first, although I didn't this time. I'm going to change the angle that I'm orbiting the planet at to match the station. And you can tell when you're getting close when you pass it now. You can tell when you're getting close. There you go. When these two flip around. I don't know if you saw it. It was very quick. Um, so let's go down just a smidgen. You see how they're moving? So that should, should be just about perfect. So that's step one. So Or step two. Step one, get into orbit. Step two, find your ascending or descending node and set your trajectory, angle, whatever, around the planet. It doesn't matter if you're higher or lower, but this is like step two. So I got nine minutes, and as you can see, the burn, the delta V is not very high. And it's probably at a right angle, and this is my target right here. It's probably at a right angle to the direction I'm traveling in, so I'm going to look for it around here. I don't have my RCS on because I have plenty of time over here so that's my opposite direction there it is oh, there it is there's the blue marker okay which is not a uh, dead space reference although I wouldn't be surprised if somebody did a dead space mod for Kerbal all right so that's where I need to be and this is where I am so let us compress time Do 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 Uh oh. Alright, I zoomed right by it. That's kind of fail on my part. So I'm actually gonna wait and do it over here. Too much uh entertaining and not enough thinking. Alright, so right here at the descending node. I think that's just about right. Okay, let's try not to screw this one up. I got 15 minutes. So you can see I'm orbiting the planet about once every 30 minutes. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Oh, I need to reorient too. It's probably on the flip side. See on the flip side. Be right down here because I'm going the opposite the opposite way. And there we go. Okay, let's try not to f this up. Alright, I'll start the burn a little bit soon, uh, probably in about 15 seconds, uh, because the uh, engine's not as powerful. And I'll try and do it so that it's about a 30 second burn. Just kind of throttle down so I get better precision. So if I do it on both sides of the marker, then or the orbiting marker, then uh, I get better uh, accuracy, I guess. And you can watch my orbital thing. I'm kind of watching this. And done. Delete that. So now I'm on the same plane. Again, not sure what the proper term is. As the station. So let's find where the station is. So it's it's out. It's ahead of me. And it's a little closer. If I, It would be quicker for me to catch up to it than it for it to catch up to me so if that makes sense so what i want to do now is i'm going 
going to suck this into the planet a... Actually, no. No, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. I'm going to orbit the planet once. Go away. Thank you. I'm going to orbit the planet once because I want to do my course corrections at the apiosis or periapsis. So my apiosis is higher than the station. My periapsis is lower, so I'll lose ground on this side of the orbit and gain ground on that side. So since I'm slightly closer than cl slightly closer to catching up than letting it catch up to me, I'm going to bring this down so that it is in line with the station's orbit and then wait until I catch up. So I can set the maneuver right here. And I want to slow myself down right here. So actually slowing down will make me go faster on the opposite side of the planet. Not entirely sure I understand the physics, but, you know, ask Newton or a rocket scientist. All right, go away. And there we go. And then that'll bring me down, as you can see, to very close on this side. You can snork that in just a wee bit more. There you go. Let's take that a look. A little bit more. Because anything outside on... Alright, that's close enough. Anything on the outside of this side will slow me down. And, you know, ain't nobody going to slow me down. Ain't nobody going to break my stride. i got to keep on moving. Who sings that? I think that was a previous question. So since I'm on the opposite side of the planet, my direction of thrust is aligned with my direction of travel. On the opposite side, when I get to the opposite side, it'll be opposite my direction of the travel. That should make sense. And we're going to go around. Hopefully I won't miss it. And obviously if this was like a NASA program, then you'd have to worry about, you know, food consumption and a schedule and stuff like that. But we can just orbit the planet as many times as it takes for this little orbital difference to catch up. Or allow me to catch up, if that makes sense. Alright, and my delta V is only 52 meters. So you see how, again, once you get out of the gravitational field, or gravitational well, I guess you'd call it, of a planet, how precise and elegant everything becomes. So I'll do my burn at 10 seconds, and then again, I'll try and finish 10 seconds after. Maybe I won't. Alright. Good enough. So let's see how we're looking on this side. Let's delete this maneuver node. So as you can see, I'm still a little bit closer to catching up to it than it would be to catch up to me. And I'm actually on the inside of the orbit. Let's see this flickering back and forth. That's annoying. The inside of the orbit, if you look very carefully. So that's good. So now what we do is we wait. And these markers right here, this is where when I cross the, cross the orbit of the other craft, where it will be. And, well, actually, this is where I'll be, and then this is where it will be. As you can see, my intersects are pretty close together, because it should give you two. Either that or it's a bug in the program. That's kind of annoying. So you can see, this is my next intersect right here, and it's gonna get, it gets closer every time. And this is maximum warp. This is maximum time dilation. So I may cut, I may cut this and then pick up when we get close to avoid boring everybody to death. Hey everybody, now we're back, and it's about, I don't know, five, seven orbits later. And uh, I think this latest version is a little bit buggy with regards to this, and it kind of makes docking a little bit interesting, because this should be... Is this my next intersect? <laughs> I can't tell which intersect is which. So we're going to try and do a, perhaps a maneuver. Okay, did we get some stability here? No, we have no stability here. Can we zoom out a little bit? No. All right, so when I get to my periapsis, I'm going to see if I can do a maneuver and see if I can stabilize this. And bring it together for a rendezvous. Okay. 
So if I make this a little bit bigger, oh, it's going the wrong way. Oh, no. Where, where's my? All right, cl close this. Add maneuver. Okay, so now we're getting somewhere. So this is really not what I want. Maybe just my trajectory's got it wigged out. So this is 21, 21 kilometers. So let's go see how close we can get it. I thought it was 21 kilometers. 74, 56. No. Ah. Gosh darn it. Now I missed my uh, thing. All right. Try it again. All right. 70. Forty-four. Usually I'd wait till it gets better, but that flickering actually was making it very hard. 5.7. Check out that bad boy. All right, can I get it any better? No, that's much worse. 11. 20. 5.8. 5.4. Four point two, three point three, two point two. That's going to be good enough for me. Now you can see the orbit's going to actually not be that great. I think ideally you want to have them as close as possible. So I need to like burn right now to have any chance of doing this because the orbit marker's behind me. So yeah, that flickering was an unintended, un uh, unexpected. There you go. That flickering was an unexpected complication. Now let's burn that. That can't be right at all. That can't be right at all. That's it. Yeah, that's not right. All right, let's close this. And now we're back with the flickering again. Great. All right, so it is slightly behind me. So what do I want to do to fix this? I want to let it catch up. So I need, so this is going to put me out further ahead. And then this will let it catch up to me. So... Add maneuver, speed this up, no, let's see, that was looking promising right there. All right, let's try that, 3.9, 14, so let's go back the other way, 4.4, 9.1, 4.4, 1.2, look at that. I rarely get it that close. And actually, that orbit for right there is not that crappy. So, <laughs> let's try not to F this up. And that will be over here. Yes, it's right there. And in theory, so this is or two orbits from now. This is one orbit from now. So in theory, if I do the burn right here and go around the planet twice, we should be at basically the exact same spot. So I don't know what's up with that flickering. I haven't really seen that before. I don't know if it's new in the version or I just never ran into it. So let's increase time. And you'll see them get probably a bit further away and then I'll course correct and then they'll get closer together. And you can see my delta V is only like 7.7 .7 meters a second. So just a very, very fine course correction. 
And it helps with ones of this nature that you put the dot exactly where it needs to go. Alright, let's not miss this. So, a minute and a half. One minute. 30 seconds. 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, and go. All right, there we go. Too much, but that's okay. <laughs> I don't want to miss it. So close that. Separation 25, that sucks. Let's fix that. So let's go back around. I should be able to fix that right here. by burning off some extra velocity. You can see my separation's going down. I'm just freehanding it. Three, two, two. Look at that, less than a kilometer. That's actually probably my best docking maneuver yet. Now the orbits aren't really that equal, but <laughs> that's okay. All right, so I need to go around once. So this is orbit one. It's going to hit right now. No. I guess I need to go around one more time. Nope, nope, nope. Actually, it did. I'm having some trouble with this. So I'm coming up on the intersect point in four minutes. So I want to orient basically towards the station. Turn off my SAS so I can actually move the ship. That. Let's not get our controls flipped around. Alright, so I'm basically pointing at the station. And let's come up to our maneuver point. Alright, now when we come up here, I'm going to just let it go a little bit further. 30 seconds. Okay, this is good enough.